thank you po Sir David natanggap ko na po yung parcel na pinadala niyo po God bless po at saka Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year Therefore, opponents of the goodwill method contend that goodwill is not determined objectively and other factors may have influenced the amount of investment required from the new partner under the goodwill method. Also, certain recipients of partnership financial statements may question the valuation of goodwill since increasing total assets may result in an understatement of the return on total assets or equity. However, in defense of the goodwill method, the current value of net assets, whether tangible or intangible, is reflected on the financial statements resulting in a more relevant measure of invested capital. Use of the goodwill method could produce inequitable results if either of the following conditions exist. Number one, the new partner's interest in profit does not equal the new partner's initial in interest in capital. So new partner's interest in in profit so uh, this involves the PNL ratio versus which does not equal the new partners initial interest in the capital so this involves the interest ratio after the formation of the new partnership the former partner do not share profits and losses in the same relationship to each other as they as they did before the admission of a new partner so any of these two will produce inequitable results or unfair results under the goodwill method and we will prove that dito sa ating illustration susunod na to illustrate this assume the following information so you have here two partners a and b originally then here comes partner c so the original capital is 300 and 450,000 Original profit and loss ratio is 50% and 50%, so 50-50. New partner's capital, 270,000. So, kukunin niya yung one-third, then the other two, one-third, one-third din. So, tigwa one-third silang tatlo. New partner's capital interest, 20%. So, ito yung kanilang profit and loss ratio, ito yung capital interest. Ibig sabihin, class, kung 20% ang kukunin niya, itong dalawang to will be 80%. The new capital balances resulting from the use of the goodwill method and the bonus method are as follows. So, examine natin closely. So, 300, 450, 270. Remember the figures. So, 300, 450, 270. The total is... 1,020,000. Under the goodwill method, yung proseso natin, ilan tong dalawang to? 300 plus 450, that is 750. Ayan. Divided by their interest ratio, as we have said, kung 20 si C, ibig sabihin 80% si A at saka si B. 270 naman si C, that is 20%. So, di-divide natin under the goodwill method, sabi natin, palakihan method. So, 937,500 and 1,350,000. Okay, panalo si 1,350,000. Kaya siya yung nandun, 1,350,000. So, 1,350,000 versus the 1,020,000. You have here 330,000. 270 kasi 1 million 350 times 20%. Tignan mo yan. Yan yung dinivide mo. Ngayon, minumultiply mo uli. Di natural. 270 yan. Okay, 1 million 350 times 20%. So, 270. Versus 270, kaya meron kang zero difference dito. Ibig sabihin, the goodwill of 330,000 goes to partner A and B, the old partners. So, paano nila paghahatian yung, yung 330,000? Tigwa 165. Kasi, they should use their old profit and loss ratio, which is 50-50. As is, as is stated here, okay, 50-50. So, you come up with this solution under the goodwill method. Ito yung ating accessible format for 
the goodwill method. 330,000 goodwill. In direct comparison kay bonus method, so pinagtabi natin, mahilig tayo sa ganito, especially when comparing and presenting answers, we prefer to put them side by side or immediately below the question. Bonus method, so 20%, 80%, okay na yan. 300,450, 271,020,000. Under the bonus method, the total agreed capital and the total contributed capital of 1,020,000 should be equal, so zero, there is no goodwill. 1,020,000 times 20%, Ilan tayo dyan? Is that 204,000? Could you please check? Yes, it is. It is 204,000. So, kung 204,000 ito, and you have 270 here, then that is a negative 66,000. Under the bonus method, this is a capital transfer, therefore, from the new or the incoming partner to the old partners, 50-50, so 33,000. 300 plus 33,000, you have here 333. And 33,450, you have here 483,000. So this is our solution under the bonus method, all right? Burahin natin yung mga thick marks. Magbawas tayo ng konti. Then we proceed. Assuming that subsequent events prove that the goodwill, recorded goodwill is worthless, itong 330 daw. The write-off would reduce the partner's capital balances according to their profit and loss ratio. That is correct. Okay. This is in the nature of an overvaluation or undervaluation. Anong ginagawa pag may overvaluation? Binabawas, pinaghahati-hati anong mga partners using the profit and loss ratio. Okay. Pagka-over, pagka-under, o di dinadagdagan din using the profit and loss ratio. Ang ating point dito, ang ginagamit ay yung profit and loss ratio. So you remember the two instances where in goodwill method will provide inequitable results tulad ng pinuprove natin dito using this illustration. Okay? The two instances, let us recall, ang sabi dyan, the new partner's interest in profits does not equal the new partner's initial interest in capital. After the formation of the new partnership, the former partners do not share profits and losses in the same ratio or relationship to each other as they did before the admission of the new. So, tuloy tayo. Okay? So, pag naging worthless down, na prove na yung 330,000 later on ay worthless, ira-write down yan using the PNL. It would be as follows. Okay? Tignan natin yung ating capital balances under the goodwill method. This is 465, 615, and 270,000. So, ito yon. 465, 615, and yung kay C, 270,000. 1,350,000. Alright? Tigwa one-third sila under the new PNL agreement when they received partner C already. So, tigwa one-third, equal yung share, sharing nila. So, 110,000 bawat isa. So, this 355, 505, 160 total of 1,020,000. The capital balances, if the bonus method is used, is 333,000, 204,000 for A, B, and C respectively. So, ilan yung difference? Differences, 22,000 for A, for B, and negative 44,000 for C. Let us proceed. May pinupunto yung illustration class. So, babantayan mo. Okay? The capital balances that results from using the two methods are different. Because the new partner's interest in the profit and interest in capital are not equal tulad ng sabi dun sa first situation where in the goodwill method will produce inequitable result daw. Profit and loss ratio and interest ratio are not the same as we have said nung una pa lang. In this illustration, C acquired a 20% capital interest, correct? And 33%, 33 and one third percent in the profits. Therefore, C paid 20% of the implied goodwill but had to absorb 33 and one third percent of the goodwill right off. Mm -hmm. C would have to pay 20% and later on absorb 33 and one third percent of the goodwill that has been written off. To further illustrate these concepts, assume the same facts except that the new profit and loss percentages are 50%, 30%, 20% for partners, A, B, and C. So, profit and loss percentage. 
instead of one third bawat isa. Yun yung sabi dito sa ating problem eh. Tama? New profit and loss ratio equally. Ilang tatlo? Equal. So, divided by 3. 33 and one third percent. So, in this case, paano daw kung 50, 30, 20 for partners ABC? If the recorded goodwill proves to be worthless, the decline in the asset value would affect the partner's capital balances as follows. 465,000, 615, and 270. As, work, uh, as, as the capital balance is computed dun sa taas, so 1,350,000. Write off. Equally, sabi dito class, could you please delete this? Alright? Hindi na equal yan, nakapipaste lang dun sa taas na table. So, 50% goes to A, 30, 20%, so 330. 1,020,000, 300,000, 516,214,000. Capital balances, if the bonus method were used, 333,000, 483,000, 204,000. Could we please check those figures? Are they accurate? Yun nga ba yung napalabas natin under the bonus method? Yes. Okay. 333, 483, and 204,000. Ayan. In this case, partner A and B shared equally in the initial recording of goodwill but unequally in the subsequent write-off of the recording. Thus, the discrepancy. Oo nga naman, kasi before the recording of the goodwill, di ba 50-50 sila? Alright? Then after the recording of the goodwill, hindi na sila 50-50. Kasi yung difference dun sa asset na nira-write off ay decrease difference. So, kung noon yan, mag sila. Pero ngayon, hindi. 50 and 30%. In this case, A and B shared equally, tulad ng sabi natin. Assume now, now assume the same facts except that the new profit and loss percentages are 40%, 40%, and 20% for partners A, B, and C respectively. After the write-off of the goodwill, the capital balances would be identical to those achieved under the bonus method as indicated in the following table. Capital balances under the goodwill method, you have here 465,000. 615 and 270,000. 1 million 350,000. Goodwill write off equally. Okay. Tanggalin mo din tong equally. Hindi na nga sila equal. Hindi tigwa 1 third yan. Kasi 40, 40, 20 this time. So 132,000, 132,000 and 66,000 for partners A, B, and C respectively. Could you please check that? 330,000, 40, 40, 20%. Capital balances, okay, under the goodwill method, after the incorporation of the write-off, 333,000, 483, and 204,000. Exactly the same with the bonus method. The equality between the capital balances is achieved because neither of the two conditions that produce inequities exist. If these conditions do exist, preference is given typically to the bonus method because of the possible inequities that may result from the write-off of goodwill. Yun yung pinupunto ng ating problem dito. Kanina pa, nasabi na niya dun sa first situation dito. Okay? C acquired 20% of the capital interest and 33% interest in the profits. So, ibig sabihin nun, C would have paid 20% for the goodwill but had to absorb 33 and one third percent of the goodwill that has been written off. So, dun palang may inequity na. Withdrawal or retirement of a partner. For some reason, a partner may withdraw from the partnership. If under the terms of the contract, a partner is given the right to withdraw, that partner is entitled to claim the full amount of his interest in the firm, represented of course by his capital interest. If the withdrawal is made without the consent of the other partners and in contravention of the partnership agreement, he becomes liable to his co-partners for any damages sustained as a result of his act. In such case, the withdrawing partner's claim for his interest may be reduced by the damages suffered by the other partners. So dito sinasabi sa atin na uh, po pwede namang mag-withdraw yung partner, i-claim niya yung kanyang interest in the firm, represented of course by his capital, but it must be 
be with the consent of the other partners. Because if not, oh, mananagot siya sa kung ano man ang masuffer na damage or loss ng ibang mga kasama. In order to avoid controversy at the time of withdrawal, the partnership agreement should indicate the special procedures that are to be applied in measuring the interest of the withdrawing partner. The agreement should indicate the recognition, what recognition is to be made on values of property items, as well as any partnership goodwill in arriving at a settlement. So, ito yung sinasabi natin, doon pa lang sa chapter 1, that in the formulation and in the composition of the articles of co-partnership, they must anticipate all possible scenarios all throughout the formation, operation, liquid, uh, dissolution, and up to the liquidation. All possible scenarios so that there will be no conflict later on. Okay? Kasi normal lang yan sa life ng business. Siyempre, magdi-decline and then eventually magli-liquidate. Depende na lang kung gaano katagal yung life ng business. So, the agreement must specify the procedures that must be in place should these scenarios occur. It should indicate how payments are to be made in settlement of interest. In the absence of appropriate provisions in the original agreement, partners will have to make special arrangements at the time when withdrawal occurs. The law provides under Article 1835 of the New Civil Code that the withdrawing partner from a partnership and settlement with the firm does not relieve the withdrawing partner of personal liability on existing partnership claims in the absence of an agreement to that effect between himself, the partnership creditors, and other partners. Of course, kaya as much as possible, bago mag-exit ang isang partner, withdrawal yung pinag-uusapan natin dito, e maklarify muna lahat ng mga issues. Baka kasi may tinatakasan lang siya, syempre, the law does not allow that. Ordinarily, a partner's withdrawal calls for a revaluation of partnership assets. Gains and losses from such revaluation are carried to partners' capitals using their profit and loss ratio. So, sa makatuwid, bago siya umalis, ia-update muna yung kanilang capital balances. Kung merong kailangang itaas ang value para maidagdag dun sa capital balances nila or kailangang babaan para mapaghati-hatian yung decrease, then so shall it be before anyone gets out of the partnership. As a result of the partner's withdrawal, the partnership operations may be terminated or continued. Partnership operations terminated. So, pagka nag-terminate na, magli-liquidate, following that, mag-realize ng mga non-cash assets, then that would be the end for the partnership, but that would be taken up in another topic called partnership liquidation. Pero kung mag operate pa after the dissolution, Pagka umalis yung partner na yun, madi-dissolve. But if they continue the operation, then a new partnership would have been formed. So the remaining partners may decide to continue the operations of the partnership even after a partner withdraws from the partnership. Settlement may be made with the withdrawing partner as follows. Pwedeng bilhin ng outsider yung interest niya. Pwedeng by another partner or bilhin na lang ng partnership. Purchase of interest by an outsider or another party. The purchase of a withdrawing partner's interest by an outsider or by any of the remaining partners is similar to the admission principles na na-discuss natin kanina. So, similar to the admission of a new partner by purchase. So, ang mangyayari, parang binenta mo dun sa partner na yon or dun sa outsider na yon. Therefore, you are welcoming a new partner by purchase principles. That means to say, it is a personal transaction between the outgoing partner at kung sino man yung pagbibentahan niya. Alright? So, just like kanina, just like before, the concern of the partnership is merely the transfer of the capital account from the outgoing to the incoming partner. Okay.